On today's show, a piece of furniture that's going to grow you a gross, sludgy dinner. And I'm already skeptical because we're going to talk about hover bikes and hover boards. It's tomorrow daily. <laughs> Citizens of the internet, I'm Ashley Skeva. This is Kill Anonymous, and you're watching Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. Um, you seem so down. I, I've spent way too much time on the internet to have things like just slide by as just like a reality. Well, so, it's all true, right? Everything on the internet is true. Yeah, everything I put up on the internet is true. That's accurate. Well, I mean, I feel like we gotta really kind of we gotta we gotta figure out this these hover hover items. So let's hit the headlines. <laughs> Many of you sent us this one this so morning. So many of you. Because uh, there's hoverboards now. Because, uh, because of this video that was announced by Lexus in which they've created a hoverboard for their series Amazing in Motion. They claim that they have a hoverboard that yeah. they're going to be showing off soon. Here's, here's the ad. Yeah, um, we're going to watch this ad all the way through, guys. They claim it uses liquid nitrogen cooled superconductors and permanent magnets to support the weight of a person. Now, watch this. Here's, here's the Look, twist. It's misting. All right, so there's the hoverboard. They slowly pan down. Liquid nitrogen. Right? So, liquid. It's, that's cool. I like the That is liquid pretty nitrogen. cool. It looks awesome. But here we go. Here's, here's why we get skeptical. And use that hoverboard. Oh, cuts to black. That's where the actual ad stops. Yeah. Now, we've failed to see this get used yet. That's, I mean, that's all we have. Apparently, Lexus is saying you can follow them. Um, but of they, course. they're also saying that uh, it's a, the board actually needs a surface. Uh, Lexus has admitted it's similar to Hendo's hoverboard. Do you remember that hoverboard yes. that like Tony Hawk used and, and stuff like they that? They need a special it was part, just on, right? like, a, it was, yeah, it was just on like a m metallic sheet or whatever, uh, so it only works on special surfaces. Man. So great! We didn't already see this? So, uh, and we're- I feel we cheated! See, as you should. I'm upset. Well, what do you want to see? What? What are we seeing? We want to see somebody use this. We want to see somebody actually use the hoverboard, but this yeah. is what Lexus has for us, and it's called, uh, again, it's Amazing in Motion. Uh, it's been in development for over a year and a half, so it's like they've been working on it since they knew that they this year's 2015. Still uh, to us. And uh, teams in uh, Germany and London worked on it. So, oh, well, yeah. so there you go. We'll yeah, see. So, what do you think, Ashley? I mean, I feel yeah, I feel cheated. I feel cheated. This is I got really excited well, don't today. Don't feel cheated yet. You haven't seen it. Well, I, so I saw the video and I was really excited because it was hovering on a surface that appeared to be concrete, and I was like, oh my god, somebody cracked it. You guys, we have a hoverboard. Even if the guy could just stand on it, doesn't even move, I'd be excited. No, it's a special surface, just like just like we saw. So it's like we've been there, we've seen this. I mean, how many hoverboards are we gonna have to suffer through in 2015 because it's the 30-year anniversary of Back to the Future? Like, how many? I don't I don't think my little science heart can take it. Look, it's honestly your fault for like being so interested in this without actually just. Because anytime somebody says hoverboard, you're going to be drawn to whatever they're saying. And so I think we just wait and like not check out this Lexus until you hear from us that it's actually cool. Yeah. Or from somebody else. We're refusing and to it, cover the, it after the this. The thing is that Lexus is creating this because they know it's going to get eyeballs on Lexus. Of course. Well, and how many Ooh. people, like you said, are going to, you said they want people, oh, if you want to see somebody ride it, you have to follow us, you keep tabs on us. Of course now millions of people are going to yeah. follow Lexus who haven't before. So it's just like, I feel... Like, this is such a cheap marketing ploy to get people to follow their YouTube channel, and that makes me kind of mad. Like, I'm kind of mad about it. I'm a little bit Hulk. It's Shark Week, and I wore a shark shirt, and I feel very shark-like right now, and I feel like I'm going to chomp something. I'm not happy. Hashtag of the day. All right, what is it? TD Hover. What kind of futuristic transportation would you rather have instead of hoverboards? Because apparently you're not going to have hoverboards. Yeah, because we're not going to get any. So uh, what do teleportation. You want? That's not even a question, really. I mean, or I want... time travel. I mean, oh, time travel. So teleportation, because honestly, that way I can I can be late. I can be or time efficient. Well, you'll never be late. You'll never be late and, now. Yeah. Well, yeah. All in you know, relative sense, but yeah. So there you but go. But how would you feel about being killed and then rebuilt? Because that's really kind of what teleporting is. I mean, I won't. You'd be dissolved won't. and then rebuilt. Straight up won't matter to me. I'll be dead. You won't dead. care? You won't care to be dead. All right. Fair enough. Uh, I would say, you know, honestly, I really want Hyperloop to be a real thing. Like, I have so much hope about Hyperloop that I'm like, I just, like, I know that it's probably a little unrealistic, but I'm, I'm so slightly, like, really excited about Hyperloop. And it could, if it, even if it happens, like, at a, 
at a fraction of what they think it could be, like that would still be really exciting. So for me, it's Hyperloop. I want to travel it's basically a in a vacuum tube. Like shoot me up to San Francisco. I could go visit. Like Futurama, yeah. I could go visit all of our Cena San Francisco friends. Like we could go up there and actually like party with them all the time and hang out and stuff. And then we just come back and it would be less than the commute I have now from here to home. Cena guys really got to step it up. We partied with the GameSpot guys this last weekend. Fair, fair. I don't know. Well, CES and was pretty amazing though. If you're that's recalling. true, that but I had to leave party. to go to a concert, he so I didn't get to early. hang out with all of them. It was a great night. No, I do, I do remember. They were pretty. They were pretty good. Yeah. They were actually. It was comparable for sure. It was comparable. You guys would be surprised. I didn't get to spend the, my whole time really with, like with the scene. Actually, I didn't get to spend the whole time with either. I had left for a concert for, concert for, for both. both. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> Concerts are more important than us. Okay, next time. That's so great. <laughs> okay, next time. <laughs> so that's our party news yeah. and for that's the episode. What, wrapping it back to hashtag the TD Hover. Ha, what mode of transportation would you rather, futuristic mode of transportation would you rather have, aside from hoverboards, because we're not getting one, to get to your favorite people to party with? And TD there Party, who do you think parties harder, GameSpot or CNET? I like that. Let's answer that question, too. Okay, let's talk about hover bikes, because that's also a thing in the news. Uh, apparently, the U.S. Army Research Lab made a deal with a couple of different companies to work on hover bikes. This is a real thing. This is not a joke. Uh, this has moved past the concept phase. These are these are things that are happening right now. The two companies are Malloy Aeronautics and Service Engineering. Um, they want to develop these hover bikes with the Department of Defense, uh, for the Department of Defense, I should say. Uh, obviously, they'd be a lot better for range because you're not having to ride over rocky terrain. Uh, these would be things that would be a little bit more fuel efficient, obviously better in, uh, in terrain where it's you know, really tough to get any vehicle through. Um, and Malloy, this is, uh, this is Malloy Hoverbikes channel. This is their hybrid hover bike. Pretty awesome, lifts like a chopper. Uh, and then it looks and rides kind of like a motorcycle. So this is a small, look at this little tiny version of it where they have like almost a little, they have a little, almost like a little action figure on there. And he's like riding around over there. So that was one of their test uh, like prototypes. And then they did, made a bigger one that's actually like full size for people. Which is I love crazy. it. Yeah, it's super awesome. Um, and actually, uh, Malloy had a successful Kickstarter last year. Um, so this has been in testing. This is the full sized one. This is a human sized uh, test version of a, of a hover bike, um, but nothing human ridden that is untethered. So everything's kind of tethered right now. Yeah. And they're able to test with a person on it, but only when it's actually tethered. And this is, uh, this is not that. So um, it remains to be seen whether or not they will end up taking other taking over other forms of transport, like motorcycles and things like that. That in looks the mili- dainty. In the military. It does look a little bit delicate, but I would imagine if there is Department of Defense money behind it, it's, it would probably be, you know, kind of strengthened. This is super a bit. cool. Pretty awesome. I really like kind that. Of great. It just be a bunch of. Can I tell you, we have a we have secret footage of actual military speeder bike. This is a first. We're gonna show it here on tomorrow daily. It's an exclusive. Logan, oh can you roll God. that? Here we go. There you go. <laughs> That's for real. That's what it's gonna look like. It's just like that. All right, I don't like I really, thing. I really hope you get sued for that. That, I, that no, joke was not, less than eight not seconds. worth getting sued for. Fair use and commentary or, or, over the top. Or you can think of hover bikes like this, Logan. Oh, perfect. Great. The Simpsons. The Simpsons. They have hover bikes. Those are hovering <laughs> bikes. I like that so, so much. You no, know but those look really cool. You look, they at, look, you look like the green goblin when you're like floating around they and stuff like that. They do look pretty rad. Um, okay, speaking of the color green, we have to talk about this because it's very upsetting to me. This is a table that grows you food grows oh. food for you, which sounds great in theory, but then when I tell you what it is and what it is kind of looks like, like, so here it is. This is an actual, it's not a concept. You know, a lot of this stuff is concept. This is a prototype design that they're actually showing at an art museum in Philadelphia. So this is from architectural designer Jacob Duenius and industrial designer Ethan Freer. They put together this conceptual design, uh, your furniture grows food for you. So you can see this big green tank right. inside the furniture. Okay, photosynthetic. It uses waste heat, light, and carbon dioxide inside the home to feed little tiny edible bacteria inside. Okay, so far and then, gross. Yeah, it looks really disgusting. Uh, and at, at a certain point, you'd be able to sort of tap one of these glass containers and eat the green sludge inside as food. That's how you would do it. You would eat it as food. Watch, look. This is so upsetting to me. Like, oh, let's eat this gross green sludge. But apparently, it's blue-green algae, which I guess you can buy at supplement stores. You can actually buy blue-green algae. It's very healthy. Uh, it has a lot of proteins. 
Um, and it, people already eat it as a supplement, just not in this form. And, um, and, and so it is not a completely unrealistic thing, but yeah, we, I would not eat that. That is Soylent Green. I am 100% convinced that's people. That's what it would, yeah, there you go. That's blue green algae right there, the powder form. Nope. Nope. Cool. Nope, won't eat it. I think that's cool. I mean, it so looks awesome. So is that for awesome. like astronauts and astronauts in their, their, their ship and they're all alone just eating green, green sludge? Green sludge. Well, so I don't know that they would have the right environment to feed that, that bacteria because it eats stuff like carbon dioxide in the air. So I'm not sure how much food that little bacteria would have but in a home they were saying like it would it the idea is that so their goal because they're artists and architects and designers is to help people remember that we're all at all times completely surrounded by microorganisms and by showing us visually and giving us something that we can actually consume it's a really good reminder of like the fact that you know it's okay to eat stuff like this like this is this is life. Like life is happening everywhere. What's the nutrition value of this slime? Apparently it is, I think it has like double the amount of protein that it, I mean, it's like up there. Like if you look up blue green algae, it's, that's what it is. It's blue green algae. So it has like really high calcium levels, really high. Like there's some, there is some real nutritional value to this stuff. Well, I want that. So, and I know I can totally see kale eating this yeah. because kale literally eats like salads. This is yeah. like kale's life. I don't eat, I don't even care about the flavor of food really. No. As long as it doesn't taste bad, I'll eat it. You'll eat it. So, okay. All right. Well, I'm if down you guys, for this. Listen, uh, if you just guys are watching. Just hook me up to it like Bane. Just hook you up, put it, yeah, oh my God, that'd be amazing. Hit a little button on your chest and just like, <laughs> oh, oh, algae. blue green algae, that'd be glorious. Um, I'm actually curious to see how many people that are watching this would, would be down on Yeah, this. let us know if you'll eat any of that stuff because we're just curious and, and we want to know. Imagine it's also affordable too. Imagine, you know, like yeah, you let's can say eat it's, it in a cheap way. Maybe you could buy it at Ikea. Like you go get it, go get the table and the little thing and a start. it's like a starter kit and you right. build your little table and you put your crazy photosynthesis growing plant food algae bubble in the table. It'd be kind of weird. Anyway, that's it for headlines. Uh, we'll come right back with a mod squad that I'm pretty sure is going to be Kale's greatest mod squad of all time. And then we'll Does have it make your- make algae? No, but oh. it's maybe even better for you. And then we're gonna talk about your user feedback and of course our phone talker for the day. So don't click away, it's Tomorrow Daily. Welcome back to the show. It's Wednesday, which means we like to talk about stuff people, other people did and put together because they're better than us. This is Mod Squad. I found this on Reddit, and I don't think Kale's seen this yet. I really, I thought he had, but maybe he has not. This is from Reddit user the MCB, and I'm pretty sure he gets the title of best friend ever because he made a Pip Boy 3000A. Okay. And I like this already. Uh, yeah, I, I figured you would. Um, this thing is amazing. So check check this out. He's got a video of it. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it while he while this video plays. He got a 3D body of the Pip Boy printed from Nakamura Shop Online. So he sent in a, a file. So that's there. It is like pretty detailed. Looks pretty great. Um, found a piece of curved glass, like actual curved glass, not plastic, from a slide viewer that he bought on eBay for 10 bucks that just happened to fit perfectly into this Pip-Boy. And it is a Raspberry Pi based user interface from a developer called Select None. And the, um, the user interface for Raspberry Pi is called Raz Pip-Boy. And it actually shows your location in Google Maps. You can, you can plug in an API key for Google Maps and it'll tell you exactly where you are. Here it is booting up. Um, if you're wondering where the computing and battery power comes from, you saw there were some cables attached to it. Well, that's because he also made his friend an armored Vault 101 suit to hold the Raspberry Pi computer and the batteries. I mean, this is incredible. Look at this. This is amazing. It looks so, so good. It looks real. I mean, the curved screen really sells it for me. That's the thing that really blows my mind is the curved screen. It looks gorgeous. Um, he's working cool. on, he's almost finished. He's saying he's like got to put the buttons on and everything and the dials, but he's definitely like, he's almost done with it. His friend, I think, you know, it, if I was his friend, I'd pretty much make this my Halloween costume for the rest of my life or until he made me something else equally awesome. But yeah, 
Pit Boy 3000A just like just crushed it. Just crushed it. That's incredible. Yeah. I want these to be the collector's edition ones. We're going to get little plastic things that fit on our arms. I can't see him turning the dials. I think he's actually using a controller right now just because he hasn't installed the dials oh, yet. Oh, okay. How much but did that's, this cost But that's like there's him? the GPS Washington. That's that's wow. Google Maps. That's Google Maps. Is it amazing? Um, yeah, he was saying, uh, I think he, I, he mentions a whole bunch of stuff about like, cause the Raspberry Pi is only like 25, 30 bucks. And then he talks, if you go to the Reddit thread, it's really, we have a link to the, to the Reddit thread in the show notes. If you go to the article version of the show, he, it's so detailed and I, it's so impressive. I mean, really impressive. That's unreal. Yeah, here's some pictures. Come on, the bathroom, Why really? Why take pictures but in the bathroom? But look at that wow. thing. The curved screen, I'm telling you, is the thing that really sells it for me. It's in, It's incredible. It's amazing. It doesn't look as bulky as the vault uh, of the, the collector's the edition. The Pip Boy from the collector's edition for yeah. Fallout 4. But so. I mean, it's really nice. Really nice. So now uh, the MCV will take two, first of all. And secondly, can you be Kale's best friend and make him one? You didn't even, like, it's also a big deal that he made the Vault 101 suit because you yeah. can't just buy those. I mean, you no. can buy one, but he actually, like, hooked it up with yeah, the Yeah, he's got, Pit like, Boy. the wires all hooked in there. I mean, so good. So good. It's impressive. Yeah, super good. Um, okay, so now that we've talked about Mod Squad and given much praise to Reddit user the MCV, uh, we got to talk about you. It's time for user feedback. Okay, so TD Spidey. We asked you guys to use TD Spidey to tell us what you thought about Tom Holland uh, being cast as Spider Man. We got an email from Jolly, wrote in, said, Just saw the episode on Tom Holland. I just hope he takes a more Andrew Garfield spin on the character. I think Andrew's take has been the best so far. It's sad to see him go, but hopefully it will be kind of like the Hulk handoff before. Uh, I can see why Marvel would go with the younger Peter Parker, and I think it gives them a lot more freedom with ways to take the story. I was really hoping for an end credit scene in Avengers with Spidey showing up somewhere, and I can't wait to see what happens now that he's going to be in the MCU. Um, so he And he also talks about how he's picked up Ultimate Universe, and he's been into Miles Morales as Spider-Man and all this stuff. So he's, like, really into comic books uh, and the movies, which is pretty awesome to hear from that point of view. Uh, and then Dustin wrote in on Twitter and said, meh. Not really sure how I feel on Tom Holland. However, he does have a job, so I guess it's not up to us anyway. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> very it's true, true, Dustin. It's very true. You have no power now. We have no power. Powerless. Matt wrote in and said, to be honest, I think Kale would be the best Spider-Man. And then uh, made that. Woo! <laughs> Did you use the Tobey Maguire body? Your <laughs> head looks huge on Tobey Maguire's body. It's amazing. It looks freshly tanned. <laughs> look, at, look at Mexican Spider- half yeah. Mexican Spider-Man. I love Hispanic Magusta. Spider-Man. Magusta. That's Very amazing. Impressive. Thank you for that, whatever. That and is. then uh, the last one, which you'll also really like, is from Hakimi. He says, just one thing, just got one thing to say. I can't believe it's not Butterfield. <laughs> Ace of Butterfield. I love I that. I love that. That was really funny. It made me laugh quite a bit. So uh, thank you very much for your user feedback. We got a couple other ones saying they couldn't believe that Kill was not cast. And I, I agree. It's a huge, it's a huge letdown. It's a Marvel blow. Cinematic Universe will never reach its true peaks unless I'm either Spider-Man or Kraven the Hunter. <laughs> Craven the Hunter, well, no, and your offspring is going to be Spider-Man. Your well, offspring is going to be the son's going to be spi- son or daughter. Yeah, <laughs> we can long, have a girl, spi- long, spider girl. I'll take it. As long as, as apparently Spider-Man. Spider-Man's not black or gay, it can be. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, that was your user feedback, which was great. And then, uh, and then now it's, of course, time for our very last piece of user feedback, which is our phone talker for the day. The Spider-Man one? Can you just make the Spider-Man picture, the picture of the day? The I will, I will the day. put that up on the Tumblr just so you guys can see. And the and the I can't believe it's not Butterfield. If you go to tomorrowdaily.tumblr.com, it'll be they'll all be there. Um, okay, this is from at Ben's Fans Club on Twitter. Uh, he says, Good morning, Ashley and Kale. Recently I went cycling with my classmates opposite the central business district area. While resting, I caught this panoramic view of Singapore C B D using my iPhone 6 Plus. Which includes the Singapore Flyer, Gardens by the Bay, and Marina Bay Sand Skyscraper. Hope that you can feature this on Tomorrow Daily. Well, your wish has come true. Thank you, and keep up the great work. So that's at Ben's Fans Club. So that's Singapore. All the way from Singapore, that picture came from. Pretty great. I d- the, the Six Plus still takes some of the best pictures. It does. I mean, it, they that's all... the reason why I bought the camera. They're I mean, so the good. They're yeah. so good. They'll, you know what, though? I will say the, uh, the low-light video is infuriating. But it is on every smartphone camera ever, so 
that's that's my big gripe. But yeah, that's a great picture. Uh, of course, you can send over your photos and story ideas to tomorrow at CNET.com, and you can always find us all over the internet at Tomorrow Daily on probably your favorite social network, but go to Twitter. Yeah, and also head up our personal accounts on Twitter, which is at Kale Anonymous. And at Ashley Scala. That's it for the show today, guys. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new dog out of weird science facts, science fiction stories. Blow it up in your face and being great. But until then, be good humans. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.